title of the message is Unity in Diversity. Unity in Diversity. With a show of hands, who's been to a symphony? Anybody? Symphony? Who's seen an orchestra? You guys seen that? Orchestra? And you have that one person in the middle, kind of on a platform, has a little baton. And what's that guy's call? What's, what's the person's name? Conductor. The conductor. Exactly. And so the conductor helps guide and make sure that there's this harmonious sound, this beautiful sound that comes with the orchestra. If you guys been to the, you've seen the choir, right? You see Tom, I miss Tom, but Tom, man, when he's up there, he's like conducting and he's like powerful. And I'm not even in the choir, I'm over there and I'm, start, I'm starting to sing with them. I mean, it's an important role. It encourages you. It challenges you, but they also know if you're out of tune, they also know if you're faking the funk. Like, I, I can't go up here and just, you know, start singing. It's your right turn. I'm just going to start just mouthing. He'll know I'm not singing. So a conductor plays an important role. So, okay, for instance, say you're part of the orchestra. You know, there's all types of instruments out there. You have the violins, the cymbals, um, the xylophone, flute, and a piccolo. Right? And, and say you play the piccolo. And you're around and, you know, your, your part comes up and you're like, man, everybody else's sound is so loud. I'm playing the piccolo. No offense to those who are playing a, who play piccolo. I go, you know, I'm not going to play when my turn comes up, my part comes up. Because you know what? Everybody else is loud. They're fine. They're not really going to miss me. So I'm not going to do it. So can you imagine that? Your part comes up and you just kind of fake it and don't do anything. Now, if you're the audience and you heard that, you'd be like, oh, that's still beautiful music. You didn't hear anything. You didn't, nothing's missing. It was a beautiful symphony, beautiful melodies, beautiful music. But I bet you the conductor heard it. Saying, oh, you didn't play. You didn't play your part. There is something missing. You didn't use your instrument. And I share that with you. Because just how the conductor knows when the piccolo that is part of the orchestra is not playing. God knows when we're not using our spiritual gift in the church. And it's needed. You know why it's needed? Because the work of the church will not be complete. The church is not running as efficiently as it should be. And it's not making an impact as we should be in our local church, our homes, in our community. Even the title or, or the theme of all the sermons, making an impact for the world. Now, my question to you is, are you using your spiritual gift? See, you play a vital role in the church. If you have your Bibles, open with me to 1 Corinthians 12, starting with verse 1. And it says this, Now concerning spiritual gifts. So here's the transition. Brothers, in other words, Brothers and sisters, better translated, or Christian family, or all Christians, I don't want you to be uninformed. So he already scolded them in, in verse, I mean, chapter 11. Now he's telling them, look, I don't want you guys to be ignorant anymore. There's something going on here with regards to spiritual gifts. And then in verse 2, he goes on, you know that when you were pagans, when you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. So he says, when you were unbelievers, when you were led astray, guess what? You were worshiping mute idols. So an idol is a man-made image that's worshipped. It's anything receiving worship other than the one true God. And I love how Psalms 115 describes an idol. It says, the, their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but do not speak, eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear, noses, but do not smell. They have hands, but do not feel, feet, but do not walk. And they do not make a sound in their throat. See, these idols, they used to worship, basically saying they had no life. They weren't alive to begin with. They are dead. And I love verse 3, and he kind of sets it up before he talks to them about the spiritual gifts. He goes, therefore, I want you to understand 
that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except what? In the Holy Spirit. Do you see what Paul was doing? He was contrasting two things. He says, here, look, these are your pagan idols. They're mute. They're not alive. They're dead. But those who are in Christ, who have the Holy Spirit in them, guess what? They speak, and guess what they proclaim? That Jesus is Lord. You used to worship dead idols, mute idols, and now you're in Christ. You are alive in Christ, and we can proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Now, my question for you is, is Jesus your Lord? And if he's not, I pray and hope that you would make that decision today at the end of the message. See, if Jesus is your Lord, then you will understand the unity and diversity pertaining to spiritual gifts. There should be no division or disunity. Too many often in the church, spiritual gifts bring about disunity. Agree? We like to compare. My gift is better than yours. Oh, my gift is more important. And it brings disunity. And it's totally opposite of what Paul is writing about here and what he's saying spiritual gifts should do or should be doing in the church. See, there is unity and diversity in the church because we are guided by the same source. So what do I mean by this? In verse 4, now there are a variety of gifts, varieties, but the same what? Five times in our passage, just our passage alone today, Paul uses this phrase, the same spirit. Variety of gifts, but what? Same spirit. Unity in diversity. Paul reminds us the source by which unites us, which is the Holy Spirit. See, with that same spirit, there is this diversity, these spiritual gifts, and And then we'll go over the short list in our passage today. And I love verse 5, and he goes on to say, And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. By the same Lord, Jesus who unites us. This is who the Lord is. This is who they're referring to. And there are a variety of ways to serve in the church. When it says service ministries of the church. And the gifts given to us by God, what? We are to use for his service in the ministry. In verse 6, there are varieties of activities, or you could translate that as results or effects, but it is the same what? God who empowers them all in everyone. I don't know if you guys caught that in the beginning, but it talks about the Holy Spirit, talks about Jesus, talks about God, talk about the Trinity, unity, unity. And diversity. Paul is a genius when he was writing this. He was setting something up to let them know this is what unity and diversity is about if, with regards to the spiritual gifts. He says, There are a variety of results for those who use their gifts for his service. And it is the same God who is at work, it is the same God who permits this to everyone. But I want you guys to catch this. That is why the results are always up to God. See, when we serve, when we do things, sometimes I, I know maybe me, sometimes I, I take it personal. When you're serving and the reaction or nothing comes back the way. And I want you to be encouraged that don't take it personal because who's in charge of the results? God. We, as children of God, are to obey, use our gifts to serve him, to build up the church. I love verse 7. It says, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. See, we are to what? Know our gifts, use our gifts for a particular service, and guess what? It's for the common good. All because we are sensitive to the Spirit and we're obedient that, oh, God, you gifted me with something. I'm going to take my step, take a leap of faith, and I'm going to serve you in whatever ministry that you send me to because you gifted me. 
with a specific spiritual gift. See, God provides a variety of ways to seek the common good. See, the common good is what is beneficial, what is beneficial to the building up of the church. And in the general sense, the community you are a part of. See, God knows the specific needs of the church. He knows the needs of Faith Bible Church of Vallejo. And trust me, there's needs. God is the only one that has provided and will provide all gifts and services or ministries that is needed here. See, what Paul is trying to remind the Corinthian believers is that no one is better, especially because of any particular gift. It is given according to the grace of God to specifically meet the needs of his church. It is given according to the grace of God to specifically meet the needs of his church. My question to you is, do you know the needs of this church? Because there is always a need, and I'm going to share that at the end. Here's some examples of what Paul is talking about here, about using your spiritual gifts for service in ministry for the common good. Take, for example, Faith Food Fridays. Anybody serve at Faith Food Fridays? Has served? Will serve? You understand, when they use their spiritual gift, Brother Ben, Sister Mary Ann, who have the gift of administration, but helps and service, you see that evident in their life. People are fed in the community. Not only physically, but spiritually. Some people have even been saved, come to the, the saving faith of the Lord Jesus Christ through that ministry. Many have been plugged in to a care group. Because why? They use their gift for a particular ministry, and this is the results, the common good. Another ministry, junior high camp. I've been blessed to be a part of junior high camp for five years. This is the fifth year. We use our gifts to invest into these kids, to these middle schoolers. During that time, they either grow in their faith or they come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior or they discover their gifts. And what's amazing this year is the first time campers that, that were there, they're actually staff this year and they're leading. It's for the common good because we use our spiritual gift in a particular ministry. And that's the common good. That is the effect. And God, it's, it's a, his, he's in charge of the results, right? But it's us being faithful to the gift that he's blessed us with and to take that step of faith. Sunday school. We invest in our kids or the adult Sunday school. We use our gifts for a particular ministry. And what comes out of it is growth in our faith. Maybe some coming to knowing Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Maybe for some is to discover their spiritual gifts and then to use it and to serve in the church today. All for the common good. And there's a variety of ways. And those are just three of them in this church alone. See, there is unity because of the finished work of Jesus. Amen? Ephesians 1.13. I love this. In him. You also, when you heard the word of, the tr of truth, I love this, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. See, believers are sealed with the Holy Spirit upon conversion. This is the same source that I'm talking about, that all believers have. See, there is unity and diversity in the church because we are guided by the same source. God, the giver of grace through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. See, there is unity and diversity in the church because we are guided by the same source. Secondly, we are given specific spiritual gifts. Does anybody know their spiritual gift? Just to raise a hand, you don't need to. Do you guys know your spiritual gift? It's awesome. And if not, give me an opportunity to see if God will guide you and let you know what your spiritual gift. And so this is the list. So I'm going to read this 
And I'm going to show you the list, starting with verse 8. It says, For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to the other utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. So this is the first list of spiritual gifts given to Christians. And this section is to illustrate the diversity of spiritual gifts. He's telling the church, look, there's a lot of ways that you can be gifted, that God can gift you. You need to be aware of that. But he also is directing them, this is how you're supposed to use them. Because if it's not to build up the church and is divisive, then you're doing it all wrong. Your motive behind the gift is wrong. Because it's always to bring up the church, to encourage the church, to bring, promote unity in the church, not division. See, a spiritual gift is something that is due to the grace of God. It is the gift of grace to a believer. You don't get to choose it. It's a gift. It is a God-given ability for service. It is necessary for the proper functioning of the church. Can you imagine if everyone in the church, not just our church, but churches in general, would use their spiritual gift? How much more they would be efficient in impacting the world, the community, to advance God's kingdom? It would be amazing. See, believers are given spiritual gifts, and every believer has at least one. You can have more, but at least one. And here it is. Spiritual, spiritual gifts are specifically for the church. It is for the encouraging and building up the church. Now, how do you distinguish, like, natural gifts versus spiritual gifts? So I have a little slide here. Hopefully, it helps you understand it a little bit more. So natural talent or gifts is given by God. Both are given by God. But one is through our parents. It's given at birth and to benefit mankind generally. Things could be like IQ, just gifted physically in strength, naturally. Uh, musically, you can read. You don't even need to read music. You just play by ear. And then there's spiritual gifts, which are given by God, but independent of parents and given at conversion. And it's what? To benefit the church, the body, specifically. But see, as you benefit the body, as you encourage the body, guess what? It's for the common good and its effects are blessings to others, to many. Now, God gives us these spiritual gifts. This is what Paul is writing. He says, these are the spiritual gifts. And here's a, a list of passages. If you guys are not familiar, but these are the passages. Ours is going to be 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. I'm not going through the other ones. But you can write those down and, and, and read them. But I'll go over some of them. See, I believe some of these gifts listed were, were crucial for the foundation of the church and the early church. You know, uh, I believe also that this, some of it was to authenticate the gospel. Because the New Testament or the Bible wasn't completed yet. So they needed to authenticate the message. So they had these spiritual gifts at those times. So here's one. I'm just going to go through the list. The ones on my left here, that's the one in our passage today. And the other ones are found in the other, in the other passages. So there's apostleship, pastors, evangelists, teaching, service, helping, exhortation or encouraging, giving, administration, leading, uh, mercy. Then you have wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophets, prophecy, distinguishing spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues and actually in our passage paul writes about he specifically puts it at the end because he's going to address it again in the next chapter which we're not going to go over today but he's going to address it because this is one of those gifts that they were fighting about or they thought they were better because they had it and here paul is talking about no this is for unity this is for building up the church not for division we're not here to fight to break down the church so Paul wasn't trying to prohibit the use. He was saying, no, use it correctly. That's all he was doing. He wasn't prohibiting. He was like encouraging, but 
Do it that edifies, that brings unity to the body. So apostleship, this one was, in the, it was used for the founding of the church. It refers to the 12, Paul and Barnabas. Pastors mean shepherding. Uh, it's the ability to shepherd. I'm just going to read this briefly to give you guys an idea. So, so t- take a mental note. Maybe some of these things are what God's tugging at your heart and letting you know this is a spiritual gift that you have that I've given you. There is evangelism, the ability to proclaim the gospel message with exceptional clarity. And I know people like that in this church. Um, if you guys know Meng and Pastor Al, they're on a mission right now. But if you hear stories of Meng, Sister Meng, you could, she would just be eating and she'll just call everybody. And all of a sudden she preaches the gospel and people come to knowing Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That is the gift of evangelism. We're all called to evangelize. Don't get me wrong. But some people... Just, man, God gifts them so well that people will listen, and they're attentive, and they come to know Jesus. There's teaching, the ability to to take biblical truth and present them in a way which others can learn and apply them in their own lives. That's pastoral. That's what he's doing right now. He's teaching, equipping pastors. He has the gift of teaching. Service and helping, the ability to work behind the scenes to ensure the proper functioning of another ministry. We have many of those. Exhortation or encouraging, the ability to come along someone in their time of need and bring comfort. People are gifted or way gifted in this church to encourage people better than me, you know, than you. They're just gifted that way. Giving, the ability to give generously with no thought of return or self-gain. You know people in the church like that? They just meet a need because God has gifted them that way. Administration and leading, these are the ability to effectively lead, plan, and execute the plan. There's many of those in this church. Mercy, the ability in which you're able to sympathize with hurt or suffering people. Stephen ministers. That's why they're called to that ministry. And they're taking that step of faith to be equipped and to be better at that because they have that gift. Hospitality, ability to give food, shelter, their life's activities. For service for the Lord. You know, people like that, they'll just open up their house. Yeah, just come on in. Doesn't matter. It's not. A, it doesn't bother us. We'll take you in. If there's a need, someone needs a place to say. They're the ones that would open up their home. There's people who are gifted that way. Wisdom, word of knowledge, the ability to understand and communicate God's truth to people. Faith. Look, we're all to walk by faith, right? Amen. But there are some people. No matter whatever's in their way, they have the faith and they believe that you know this is going to happen. God will answer and meet the need. I don't know if you guys know Dad Sarmiento. Man, he displays that kind of faith. Where he believed no matter what obstacles in the way, he knows that God will provide. He will meet that need, whatever it may be. And there's people like that in the church. Healing and miracles. There's prophets and prophecy. So prophets and prophecy, if you, in, a, in a very technical case, is those who can uh, predict the future because God told them, right? And they're a mouthpiece for the Lord. Um, but in a general sense, it's the ability to proclaim or preach the word of God with authority and assurance. And we were blessed by that. Pastor Rule is, is like that. Take something that's very, very difficult to understand, and he just, it just penetrates your heart. It's like, I always leave like, man, I got to change my life. God, what do I need to give to you, you know? Like, that, that's someone who has the gift of prophecy. And there's a lot of other preachers like that. And then I said there's the distinguishing spirits, especially when the word wasn't completed, the Bible. So you have to distinguish whether this is evil or is this from God to distinguish uh, the this, this special revelation that people were saying. So that was, like, usually for the founding of the early church. And then there's tongues and interpretation of tongues. Um, It is the God-given ability to speak a language, the earth unknown to the speaker, and then the ones who interpret it. Now, there's a whole chapter of that in in chapter 13 that focuses and emphasizes that. But the point that Paul was trying trying to make here is that no gift makes one better or more significant. There are gifts available. There are these spiritual gifts are to edify, to build up the church. It is to encourage, never to be divisive. And so we are to encourage one another to use each God-given gift. For God gave that gift to that individual for a specific purpose to help build up the church. 
They have been called for God's service. And you and I, we need to honor that. We need to honor and respect each other. And it's all for the glory of God. See, there is unity and diversity in the church because we are guided by the same source. We're given specific spiritual gifts. But lastly, we are granted specific roles in the church. In verse 11, it says, these, All these are empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions or gives to each one individually as what? He wills. We don't get to choose. He knows what's best for the church. He's going to gift you accordingly. If you're in Faith Bible Church of Vallejo, guess what? He's going to gift you accordingly because there's needs in this church that needs to be met. There are ministries in this church that we need to be serving in, all for the common good. He knows the needs of this church better than we do. He knows your needs and my needs better than we do. And he gifts us accordingly. He places us in the church accordingly. Man, if that's not a good, good father, I don't know who is. He's putting us in a place to succeed, to give him all the glory. And it's what? For all for the common? Good. See, God graciously distributes and as needed. We can't force a gift. We can't obtain a spiritual gift ourselves. We can't manifest it ourselves. It is only God who graciously gives the gift. I like how Charles Ryrie puts it in his book, Basic Theology. He says, a spiritual gift is a God-given ability to serve the body of Christ. I love this. Wherever and however he may direct. God's good and perfect will. However he may direct. See, Paul continues to illustrate unity and diversity by emphasizing that believers all have specific roles in the church. Illustration of the body in many parts. One body, all work together. We'll see this. it's in the next verses from 12 to the end of this chapter, verse 12 and on. See, in verse 14 it says this, For the body does not consist of one member, but what? Many. Many members. Different parts. Different roles. Verse 18, But as it is, God arranged, God, the members in the body. Each one of them, as he chose. God chose the roles that we will be doing in the church. We don't get to choose. It's according to his sovereign will. And when I say he doesn't get to, we don't get to choose, it's not like, oh man, what a killjoy. No, he knows what's best for you. This abundant life that he has for us, he wants you to pursue that, to be in line with his will. And in verse 20, there are many parts, yet one body. So Paul reiterates, there is unity and diversity. Many parts, one body. See, we all play a specific role in the church. Believe it or not. So how encouraging is it to know that God has gifted you, specifically and placed you in this church. See, God has specifically called you to a specific role in this church. Because he knows what is best, not only for you, but for this church. And it's all for his glory. See, this should motivate us. This should encourage you. And it should encourage you to use your spiritual gifts. Or to at least discover and know what it is. And use it. Because God does have a plan for each single one of us here. In this church. See, God knows what's best for Faith Bible Church of Vallejo. And he has gifted the believers in this church accordingly. And placed them specifically in different areas and roles in the church. It's for the good of the church, all for his glory. 1 Peter 4.10. And I love this verse. Says, As each has received a gift, use it to what? Serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Sing. We have a gift. Don't keep it to yourself. Use it because it's to build up the church. It's to encourage the church. All for the common good. Faith Bible Church of Vallejo has several ministries, more than several, a lot of ministries in this church that needs help. And what God is calling us to do is to take that step of faith and use our spiritual gift for whatever ministry that he lays in front of us. So how do you do this? First is know your spiritual gift. 
I know some said, oh, I know my spiritual gift. But there's assessments out there you can figure out, you know, take all these, these boxes and, and figure it out. It kind of guides you like, oh, I think I'm, this is where God has gifted me. But ask yourself, what do you like to do? What are you really good at? What has God made obvious to you in this church? Take inventory. Take a mental note. Maybe if you suspect that you have a spiritual gift, and here's my challenge to you then, then improve. Enhance yourself in those areas. So if it's the gift of teaching, say, I think God has gifted me with teaching. We'll continue to study more. Prepare yourself to be a better instrument for the Lord to be used. Maybe it's giving. Maybe say, oh, God has blessed me with giving. Well, then be better at being a good steward in every aspect of your life, especially financially. Then use your gifts. Serve in your local church. That is my encouragement for you, to serve, to encourage one another to use your gift. Right? So be prayerful. Pray about it. Always bathe it in prayer, then get plugged in. Ask to see where, where, where can I help out? What areas are needed? There's a need. Be, then be participating. Just serve. See, if you see a need and you're willing, take the opportunity. That's my encouragement to you. If you see there's a need in the church and you hear it and you don't know, well, I don't know if I'm gifted in this area, but there's a need. See, God cares more about our heart. Okay, well, I'm going to go and fill the need and meet the need, whatever it may be. See, be active in the church. There's always work to do for the Lord. There's always a need. See, when I first started coming to Faith Bible Church of Leia in 2004, I didn't know anything about gifting. I just knew there was a need. I'm going to go serve. I said, okay, well, I'll do VBS. I like kids, so I'll just do VBS. And then all of a sudden as I did VBS, I go, oh, look, they're going on a mission trip to Germany. I don't know what a short-term mission, mission trip is, so, uh, well, I'll just take that step of faith. I think God gifted me this way, so I'll go to Germany. Oh, okay, well, then, if not, I'll, you know, I used to play bass. I'll play bass on the worship team. And so I just kept serving because there was a need in the church. I'm going to keep serving. I'm going to keep serving. And for me, I had this idea, like, you know what? It's a win-win situation regardless. For me, that's how I thought. Because if I do this and it's not really my gifting... Oh, at least God closes that door and he leads me to the right door. Not only that, oh, I get to grow in my faith. Maybe it's to build new relationships with people in that ministry for that short time. See, it's never wasted in God's economy. God will open and close doors. So I'm saying, if you see an opportunity and there's a need, take that step of faith and see what God will do. He will open your eyes. He will encourage you. And he will show you where he wants you to be and what gift you have. See, I believe, like I said, it's a win-win. When you serve, really not knowing, not knowing if this is where God wants you or even if that's your gift or not. He uses that to guide us to the place where he wants us to be. To be the most effective instrument all for his glory. Here are the needs, and I'm just going to say it out. I'm just going to, here's some needs that I know, and I'm sorry for other ministries that I missed, but here's some needs. Sunday school, we need teachers. Like, really, we need teachers. If you are gifted with teaching, take that step of faith. Youth, junior high, high school, we need more female leaders. We would love for you to serve with us. Junior high camp, we need chaperones, we need leaders, we need staff. Is that where God is tugging at your heart? Evening service. You guys know we have a 5 p.m. service? There are many needs that we need at night. Maybe God is tugging at your heart. Maybe it's ushers, security, worship, instrumentalists, singers, Faith Food Fridays. Always needs help. Audio, visual, photographers for the website. Promo team to help promote events in this church Efficiently and better. Care ministry. I know there's great food outside and they take care of us, but I'm pretty sure if you go, hey, you guys need any help, they'll say yes. Don't think they got it all down because the food is great. Hey, the food is great. But take that step of faith. They need your help. 
church maintenance around the church. There's a lot of things that we can't get to all the time. Help out in that way if you are gifted that way. Bridge ministry. Those are people who welcome people in, the, the, the new time, uh, first timers, or they just want to get plugged into a specific ministry or a care group. They need help in that. Mommy ministry. College and career. And there's also VBS. I know there's a great need for VBS for staff. If you're gifted in that way, if, even if there's a need, just take that step of faith. So what did we learn today? Unity and diversity guided by the same source, right? Same spirit. We are given specific spiritual gifts. And we are granted specific roles. If I could summarize our message, it would be this. I will use my spiritual gifts to help build up and promote unity in the church. So my question to you is, are you using your spiritual gift in this church My hope and prayer today after this message is that you would take that step of faith and that you would use your spiritual gift in this church because there is a need. God has specifically gifted you and placed you here at Faith Bible Church of Vallejo to help build up and encourage the church all for the common good. To make an impact not only in the church, not only in our homes, not only in our community, but to make an impact for the world. Maybe you've come today And you're new and you don't still understand, what is this spiritual gift that Pastor Eric's talking about? I don't don't know what you're talking about. And that's okay. Because you are not here by accident. See, but there's one thing that I know God wants you to understand. It is this, he loves you and he is pursuing you. God wants to draw you to himself and show you the hope that he has for you. And it's through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It is in his death and his resurrection. See, my prayer for you is that you would keep coming to church. Don't worry about the spiritual gifts and serving. I want you to keep coming to church. Hear the word. Join us every Sunday. Then get plugged into a care group. Be part of a biblical community. Doing life together. Growing together. So you need to grow in your faith. And as we grow in our faith... As we understand God's love and his grace, our natural response to his grace is to serve and to follow him. To figure out what is my gift so I can serve him for the common good to build up this church. See, real Christian growth only occurs when you are rooted in Jesus. Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? See, it starts with a personal relationship with him. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for reminding us what it means to use our gift, to take that step of faith, not to hold on to it, not to let obstacles in our life um, and our fears or whatever it may be to prevent us from using it, but to trust you knowing that you gifted us specifically and you have placed us here in this church and you want us to use it to build up your church, to encourage the church all for your glory. So, Lord, I pray, Father, that everything that we've heard today, that you would just stir up in our hearts, that you would open doors, close doors. You would guide us to let us, in, let us know what our spiritual gifts are and that we could use them. And where do you want us to serve? Help us to serve. I know there's always a need. And maybe you've come today and then you don't understand these spiritual gifts. But as we learn today, it all starts with Jesus. And I pray, quietly where you're at, just pray. Say, if you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, because it starts with him. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that I'm a sinner. But I believe you sent Jesus to die for all my sins on the cross. He was buried, and on the third day, rose again. Here and now, I accept you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for this gift of eternal life. Father, I pray for those who prayed that prayer. It's not the prayer that saves, it's the intent of the heart. But Lord, I am so excited, Lord, that I know that you'll bring people in their lives to help them grow in their faith. Help them to keep coming every Sunday. Help them to be plugged in into a care group. Help them to grow and guide them 
to where you need them to be to serve you, to understand their gifts. But Lord, encourage us, challenge us, Father, to help us take the step of faith in this church to use the gifts to meet the need, knowing that it's all for your glory and it's for the building up of the church. So Lord, we love you and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this great reminder. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, uh, we'll call up the worship team to sing our final hymn. And let's all rise.